I'm Richard Priest, the Curator of Malacology at the University Museum of Zoology, and I've been interested in shells for a very long time. Uh, I've been collecting them since I, indeed, I've been collecting them since I was a boy, and behind me here is a collection that I made as, as, as a schoolboy. I'm particularly interested in land snails, and believe it or not, there are actually about a hundred species of land snail that occur in Britain. Most of you will be familiar with the garden snail and think that snails are this sort of size. But if I show you a drawer of these snails, you will see that many of them are very small indeed. These I had to collect with sieves from leaf litter or moss uh, or flood debris. Uh, and I had to obviously identify them uh, using a hand lens or a microscope. A lot of these you can find in... Uh, gardens and I think we'll go out into my garden and see what we can find today. So snails like to live in damp places often on uh, overhangs and there we have one. Here, here is the common garden snail, Cornu aspersum. It's a pulmonate snail that means that it, it, it uh, doesn't have gills but it has a sort of primitive lung and if we look very carefully we might see uh, we might see it breathe. You might see a, a hole opening up as it begins to, to breathe. So here is the, the garden snail and here it is now breathing. You can see that hole opening up allowing air to get into its mantle cavity. And if we're lucky this, it might come out to crawl. Now it's a bit... <laughs> It's a bit, it's a bit, oh here it comes, here it comes, out come the tentacles, here we come, there we are. And in these snails the eyes are at the end of the tentacles, in some species the eyes are at the base of the tentacles. I've just found uh, three uh, more specimens, uh, these belong to a different species, the brown lip snail, you can see so called because the, the aperture is, is brown coloured. There is another species that I have found in the garden uh, which has a white lip and that is, is another another species. Uh, like the, the garden snail it's a pulmonate and you can see um, it breathing as there's the hole opening up again uh, as we saw in the garden snail. Now these are um, patterned, they're much more colourful than the garden snail and they are very variable. They can have up to five bands, or they can have no bands at all, or some of the bands confuse, as in these two shells. But they are all one species. They are not three different species. This is an example of what, what biologists call polymorphism. I've just found this snail in my garden. It's, it's called the girdle snail because it's got a, a very sharp keel, and uh, which is shown up in, in white there. Uh, this is an interesting snail because its native range is Mediterranean. It lives uh, in, in a number of countries around the Mediterranean. It was known in Britain only from South Devon, where it was found in the 1950s. Uh, but in the last 20 years, it spread um, very rapidly uh, through uh, Europe, Northern Europe uh, and Southern Britain. Uh, and its spread seems to be aided by climate warming uh, and the, the increase in horticulture. Some snails are carnivorous, and they actually eat other snails. But the vast majority of land snails are, are herbivores. Uh, they can eat uh, detritus and dead uh, plant material, but many of them graze on living plant material. And we can see evidence of that. Uh, here we have a, a flower pot covered in green algae. And if you look carefully, you can see little wiggly lines going across it. It, the, the snails uh, eat algae using a, a tongue which looks a bit like a file, it's called a radula, and as they uh, pass over the surface of the flower pot, they graze the algae, leaving these very characteristic trails. Snails themselves form important food items for other animals. They're eaten by rodents, mice and voles, uh, and of course they are very important food items for birds. Now birds have a problem in trying to get the animal out of the shell. 
uh, and not all birds have learned to do this. Thrushes, for example, uh, bash the snails on a particular stone, which we call the anvil stone, uh, but things like blackbirds uh, have never learned the trick. And here is a thrush's anvil. It's not one stone, but it's actually a little stone pavement. And if we look very carefully, we can see uh, some, of the, some of the snails that they've used uh, to, uh, for food. This one has had its top bashed out, and some of these others have been broken uh, in two in order to extract the animal.